Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week it's a muntjack double for Irish stalker John Foxton down at the Audley End Estate in Essex. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. I've headed down to Jeff Garrard's patch in Essex for a spot of stalking, but today I won't be in the hot seat, or should that be the high seat. Instead, I'm guiding Irish rifle John Foxton, with Muntjac and Fallow on the cards. Soon John's in his chosen location, and I leave him to it under the guiding wing of cameraman and seasoned stalker Jason Doyle. John may be new to these shores, but he's an accomplished stalker back home in the Emerald Isle. We're all from Ireland with Jason Doyle, over as a guest of Jeff Garrard's, over to try to find the first Muntjac book. I've never actually seen no one checking the real skin before, so it should be interesting. So all we want now is a bit of luck. We're out shooting today with a Browning x bolt in 243. Um, I'm in kitted out in the Deer Hunter trousers, the Deer Hunter jacket. It's pretty cold enough up here today, so we're using Swarovski glass, so sort of using for picking them up. Yeah, before the two range finder binoculars. Local keeper Jeff Garrett has promised us a good chance of a shot here, and he's not lying. An hour into John's high seat vigil, he spots a mature muntjac doe and a buck in the undergrowth clearly interested in her. The doe emerges from the trees a hundred yards from the seat. Ideal for a shot, but where's the buck? The doe disappears and is replaced instantly by the buck. This will be John's first ever muntjac, but he's not letting the excitement get to him and calmly waits for a broadside opportunity. The shot clearly took our cameraman by surprise, but John's as calm as can be. More importantly, the book is down on the spot, dropped by an RWS round to the engine room. As John makes the approach, we ask him what he thought of this new experience. He dropped us off in the high seat about half two or three o'clock and he sat us in place and we had a look around. Um, at the start, does not really come into view, saw a few pheasants across the path, nearly scared the daylight out of me, but it came to no avail. So a few minutes after that, um, a doe came out across the lane, so I was excited, I got the binoculars, looked up, seen it was only a doe, so I hung on a few minutes, and a buck came out across the lane, so that's when the excitement hit me, so I got up then, I knew he was about 100 yards ahead of me, distances up, done out beforehand, and I was lucky enough, he stood broadside there for me, and I got the shot off at about 100 yards, and he, he dropped right on the spot, I'm delighted, he's not the biggest book in the world, but my first one check, another one of the six species, so I'm absolutely delighted and over the moon, very happy. I shot him with the Brownie x bolt in 243. I found it, it's not my own rifle. Uh, I got a length of it when I came over, but I found it very comfortable to shoot it, very easy to shoot it. And it's married to a Swarovski scope, very, very clear on the, the time of the evening. We're getting to the last 15 minutes of dark, and it's still perfect clarity, even at this time. Good bullet damage, the deer never moved. We've just picked it up right in the spot where we pulled the trigger. Over the moon, very happy. And then we're using Swarovski binoculars. Very good. I said we were using it earlier on. It picked up every little brown patch you see. Um, we think it's going to be a munchak, but except for the first few, it was just pheasants. But eventually we caught up with them in the end, so happy again. We're using RWS ammunition, and I find it very good. I said I fired at the munchak, and it dropped right in the spot where I shot it. And massive exit wound as well, so. Very happy with that. As John's the guest, we kindly let him do the honours of the Gralic. There's not long left until darkness falls, but John makes quick work of the task and is ready for extraction just as the light fades. So, yeah, well done. <laughs> Brilliant, John. 
Yeah, delighted. It was in the high seat, I suppose, for a few, after a few minutes then. Saw a few pheasants crossing the path. So when you see the brownie, you think you're, you know, they're going to be a munchak. So waited then for about, I suppose, 20 minutes or half an hour. And then um, spotted a dog came across the track. I waited, so I waited for a couple of minutes then, had a look at that. And next minute the book came out, had a quick sniff. And the dog went back in then, so I waited till I got comfortable in the shooting position. And got a good shot. Perfect heart lungs, so dropped on the spot, never moved. So. You didn't uh, get too wet or uh, a bit windy for you? Or? It was a bit windy, there was a few showers alright, but with the gear on we were happy enough and kept warm and dry, so yeah. very happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so, they never stay still for a minute, they're all sort of on the move. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, with the right clothing, there's no bad weather. No, <laughs> makes up for it all. Fantastic, it's a great representative Munt Jack. For a first Munt Jack book, he's in good, good condition, big thick neck on him. So yeah, no, absolutely fantastic. Delighted. Yeah, Thanks well done. Me. Delighted. John's off the mark, and the best part is, we're not done yet. We've got a morning out in plan too. Can John make it two out of two? A few short hours later, we're out once more. I'm putting the guys out again, but things aren't going to plan. We'll have to go into the middle of Howwood, the, the, the big tower seat, rather than uh, where I want it to be, in the death seat. It's kind of made it a little bit more awkward. Unexpected wind conditions have meant a last minute change of location, but we're still keen to see what the morning brings. Loading up the Browning rifle once more, John and I quietly head out to our substitute high seat, ready for John to get in place before dawn. As I make myself scarce to try my luck elsewhere on the estate, John can start to anticipate another successful high seat stint. Saw a few pheasants crossing the lane, but uh, no one check. Uh, we heard a one check buck barking down about two or three hundred yards away early on in play, but there was no sign of him. Uh, one dog crossed fairly early on in play, quick dart across, no chance to get a shot or anything off. And then I suppose seen plenty of squirrels, plenty of more pheasants, and this nice uh, dog came out about 75 or 80 yards. With the door not in a hurry to go anywhere, this could be a muntjack double. It's within range but slightly obscured by the trees. We just need it to move a foot further forwards. This muntie follows the script and offers an opportunity just a few minutes later. It's now or never for John. John's ready for a second shot if necessary, but once again the muntjack went down right away. And that's it for the morning vigil. No fallow for John, but a second muntjack is more than good enough. Time to descend the high seat and head over to inspect the carcass. Testing the eye response confirms another clean kill. John's experience of English deer stalking has been very fruitful indeed and a satisfying introduction to a new species. Uh, well this concludes a successful weekend. It's delighted now. So I have my book and I have my one jack doll so I'm delighted. I'd like to thank Pete and Jeff Garrett for, for the invitation over here for the one jack for the weekend and thanks to Jason Doyle for organising it. Very happy. To, they're a great little species to hunt and uh, I'm glad it's another one off the list. Oh, here's Pete now, let's see him on the way down. Nice little munch at the top. Oh, well 
do. Yeah, thanks a million. That's two more Munties headed for the larder and ticked off the cool plan. Plus a very happy hunter indeed headed back to Ireland. John and Jason there living the dream. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. There's more big news from UK Game Fair HQ, as the Countryside Alliance confirmed it will attend Country Sport's new flagship event. With more than 100,000 members, the Alliance will bring its might to Stoneleigh on the 22nd to the 24th of July. It joins Basque and the GWCT on the list of heavyweight organisations who've recently signed up. Keep up with all the Game Fair news at ukgamefair.com. The game seasons are now over, and shooting organisations have been shouting about the benefits game shooting provides to the environment and the economy. Shooting is responsible for a quarter of a billion pounds pumped into conservation every year and provides the equivalent of 16,000 full-time jobs on conservation work. On top of that, the money it brings in supports the equivalent of 74,000 jobs. Basque's Richard Ali said shooting contributes massively to the economy, often in unrecognised ways. If you've got a gun dog, don't forget you have less than two months to comply with the new microchipping laws. From the 6th of April, every dog over eight weeks must be microchipped, and if you don't, you could be fined £500. Free microchipping events are taking place across the country in the run-up to the deadline. Read up on gundog training, events and equipment every month in iShoot magazine. Clay shooting grounds are being warned to up their security measures after a spate of trap thefts. Oakhead Shooting Ground, Dorset Shooting School and Westfield Shooting Ground were all targeted by thieves, losing traps, buttons, cabling and even vehicles. Police are no closer to finding out who done it. The ground owners to bolt down their machines, clearly mark all their traps and be vigilant on open days. Read the full story in the March issue of Clay Shooting out this week. And finally, effective management of grouse moors can help prevent flooding. It's official. Responding to claims that moors have been drained to produce more grouse, Basque and the Moorland Association have briefed MPs on how moors inhibit flooding through techniques such as blocking historical drainage ditches, restoring areas of bare peat and reintroducing sphagnum mosses. Basque's Ian Grindy said grouse moor managers understand the importance of building long-term resilience into their land and a vast amount of work is undertaken to protect these landscapes. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>